So welcome to our webinar, a NorCal PTAC webinar in partnership with the DGS from California, um, contracting with California. I'm certified now what? My name is James Forrest. I'm the program coordinator for the Northern California Procurement Technical Assistance Center, otherwise known as PTAC. And we're very, very happy to be having uh, Jermaine Carter Gibson, business outreach liaison with the Office of Small Business and DVBE services with the California DGS. Oh, let's try to advance the slides here. Um, so Jermaine's going to be giving the main presentation um, and we're very happy to have her Jermaine here. So thank you. Um, I'm going to hand things over to him in a second. But first, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about PTAC. If you joined for yesterday's webinar, this will sound um, like deja vu to you. So apologies for the repetition. Um, but PTAC, we are a small nonprofit program, um, one among a network of them across the country. Uh, we're set up to help small businesses achieve success in the government marketplace. We're funded primarily by the Defense Logistics Agency, uh, the DLA. Um, we also get grant funding from other state and local sources. Um, all of this basically means that we provide our services at no cost to you. So if you're looking for free help, you've come to the right place. Um, we're passionate about what we do. We are hosted by the Humboldt State Sponsored Programs Foundation. That is Humboldt State University, up where that red star is on the map there. Uh, last year, PTAC actually helped our clients win more than $314 million in government contracts. So um, it just keeps going up every year. We're winning more and more uh, contracts for our clients. So the way we do this is with three basic core services. The first is counseling. Um, so this is the bread and butter of what we do. Uh, we have a team of procurement specialists who can act as counselors. They can meet with you individually if you submit a client application and you're accepted. And then you guys can go over just about any con a con government contracting topic you can think of. So uh, we can coach you with you know, things like bid matching, um, uh, submitting bids, marketplace research, things like that. So uh, do apply if you'd like to be a client for one-on-one -on -one services. Um, the other thing we do for our clients is free bid matching service. Um, what that does is it gives you daily access to federal, state, and local, and even prime contractor opportunities. These just go right into your inbox. So if you sign up with this tool, you set up some criteria, then these bids go to your inbox every day. Um, and you can stay on top of those opportunities made available to you. The other thing we offer, of course, are these um, trainings like this one. So these days they're all online and we often partner with other organizations. And we've been partnering with the DGS for quite a while. Um, uh, back when we had in-person workshops, always nice traveling around and, and meeting with folks. Um, and these are open to anyone to join from anywhere. So you don't have to be in this service area. Um, so it, in, across the country, uh, a lot of these things are going to be relevant to all sorts of folks, um, as long as you meet the requirements for the certifications we're talking about. Um, but if your business is located in one of these 15 counties here that I've highlighted in green, the, the all nine counties of the Bay Area and then up the coast and then the rural counties of Siskiyou, Trinity and Shasta, uh, if, you're, if you're located there and your business is headquartered there, then you, you're eligible to apply for PTAC services. The way you do that is by going to our website at norcalptac.org, find that red apply now button on the page banner, click it, create an account, fill out steps one through seven and hit save at the survey at the end. That will go over to me, I'll be notified, no need to email me, and I will uh, assign you to a procurement specialist within one to two business days. So uh, if you've actually worked with a small business development center, which is a great idea, I would recommend it, um, at SBDC in, in this region before, I would instead uh, give me an email at info at norcalptac.org. That's on the bottom right there. Um, so I can send you a special link to apply. We share a database with them. All right, time for a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we're all started off muted today. Um, and what we wanna do is ask our questions as soon as they pop in your heads. Um, you're not gonna do that aloud, but you're gonna type them into the Q&A. So in this version of Zoom, there's a Q&A and there's a chat. Um, the chat we will reserve for you know, things like technical errors, um, if you're having trouble hearing or something like that. Um, and I will be posting links and things like that. Um, but if you have a question about content, 
post it in the Q&A and I will read it aloud to Jermaine once we get to these Q&A sections. We have several of them sprinkled out throughout the presentation. So um, don't hold on to those questions, type them right away. There'll be lots of opportunities to get your questions answered. And just a word of advice for the questions, um, try to make them uh, broad, broad enough to be applicable to everybody so, so that the answer is gonna be helpful. If you're asking specifically about school janitorial services, I might skip that question and ask you to go ahead and email me directly um, just because we, we have a limited amount of time on the webinar. And we may go over the one hour mark, by the way. Um, yesterday's webinar went uh, about an hour and a half. So if you've got somewhere to be, that's fine. We will, again, be recording this session and the recording will be made available to everybody. So um, yeah, absolutely, I'm excited. Let's hand things over to Jermaine here. Thanks so much, Jermaine, and take it away. Absolutely, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the I'm Certified Now What webinar. Um, this question we get a lot, so we had to make a webinar. <laughs> we, people come to us often like, hey, I'm certified. All right, now what? So this is what this webinar is about. Um, for those of you that joined yesterday, some of the content is going to be overlapping, and that's by design. Um, as far as your questions, like James pointed out, we want to put the questions in the Q&A. Um, I hope James will forgive me. I'm going to ask a couple questions for you guys to put in the chat because I can't see you. And I love to see people and know that you guys are there. Um, again, my name is Jermaine Carter Gibson. I'm a business outreach liaison with the Office of Small Business and DVBE Services, also known as OSDS at the California Department of General Services. So my first question in the chat, in the chat, in the chat, for those of you who can hear my voice, how many of you are registered and or certified on the Cali Procure website? In the chat, just say yes, if you are. In the chat, in the chat, in the chat, type in yes. Oh, here they go. In the process, yes, yes, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys. All right, so this are, these are going to be the steps that you are gonna take next. These are the steps that you're gonna do now. If you are not certified, no worries. You do not need to leave us. Um, just, just pay attention once you go through that process. These are what you're gonna do next. All right, so let's jump into it. So the topics that we're gonna cover today for, with our time together, uh, number one, we're going to cover the California State Contracts Register, CSCR. This is where all of the opportunities are. We're going to cover updating and improving your profile which is extremely, extremely important. Uh, we're going to cover the state contract procurement registration system, otherwise known as skippers. Um, this is where you're gonna do your research, your market research, so that you can you know, be more laser focused when you're approaching uh, state departments. We're gonna cover advocates, we're gonna cover reciprocity, and we'll cover resources and CUF as well. All right, so let's dive right in. The number one question we get, okay, I'm certified. How do I find the contracts? Where do I search? So let's start there. On the Cali Procure website, the easiest way is to look for where it says quick links at the top, click the drop down, and you're going to click on view search bids. These are where the new opportunities are located. Once you click on view search bids, you're going to get this uh, search engine. Now the search engine has a, a bunch of different criteria that you can put in to search. I wanna point out that you can save your searches, which is really cool. Um, so once you do a search, you can click save search criteria there in the middle and it will save it. So next time you go back, you just click the drop down and do the search that you did before. Uh, some of the options here are event name, uh, the solicitations are called events. Don't ask me why, but they're called events. So event name is gonna be the name of the opportunity if you know that. Every event, every solicitation has an event ID. It has a number associated with it. So if you know that, you can plug that in and search by that. Uh, we also have where you can search by department. If you have done your research and you know these are the departments that I want to focus on, then you can just search by department and see what opportunities they have available. What a lot of people miss is this very next step. 
is the advanced search criteria. This is really important. You can click on advanced search criteria and it opens up and has additional options. So along with the basic search options, you also have start date and end date. This is when the solicitation was posted and when the solicitation closes. You also have where you can search by item description. Um, so whatever the goods or services that are being offered, you can put in the description. The last two are really important. So UNSPSC code, this stands for United Nations Standard Products and Services Code. I know you guys went over that yesterday. You can search by specifically by those codes. It is extremely, extremely important for you to do your research and know what UNSPSC codes apply to your company and make sure that you have those in your profile, you have those on your capability statement that we'll cover later. Um, this is how buyers look for you. And these are how the opportunities will find you and you will find them. Uh, you can search by service area, which is where you wanna do your work. There's also a box where you can search for the entire state of California. And lastly, there at the bottom, you have contractor license type. Uh, so if you have particular licenses that apply to your business, you can plug those in. And if those are prerequisites for um, a given opportunity, then those opportunities will pop up. And you will just click search, and then you will get all the results from that search. Once you find an opportunity, the opportunities look like this. Um, and I wanna highlight some portions of a given solicitation. So first there at the top, you see it has the description. Um, it has the posted date, the end date. That end date is important. That's the date that you have to bid by. Um, there at the top on the right, you have the contact person. Um, so this is the person that will be answering questions directly related to this. Um, typically you only see an email. Uh, this opportunity, I was able to find an email and a phone number. Um, typically, it's easiest to have, have those contacts via email. And for you, it's good to have those contacts via email so that you have record of the conversation when you're asking specific questions so that if anything comes up later on, you have documentation of the answers that you were given. All right. If you are interested in this opportunity, you're going to click on accept invitation there at the top on the right. And this is going to inform the contact person that you are interested in this opportunity. Um, you can also see there, see the contractor license type. Uh, these are the specific licenses that are prerequisite for this opportunity. You also see the UNSPSC classification. That's the classification assigned to this opportunity as well. Next, view event package. This is extremely important. Inside of this event view event package is where you're gonna find all the particulars in relation to this opportunity. So this is gonna be all of the bidding instructions, any adjustments or amendments that have been made. Everything that you need to know about this opportunity is going to be in the uh, event package. So make sure you go in there and thoroughly go through the event package so you know exactly what's being, what's being asked, asked for in this opportunity. And lastly, I hope you guys can see it, is post a vendor ad there at the bottom on the left. If you see an opportunity and you don't see post a vendor ad, it means that you're not logged in to the system. So you have to log in with your profile information. Uh, posting a vendor ad allows you to say things like I am a, I'm a prime looking for a subcontractor or I'm a sub looking for a prime contractor or you know any op anything that you can do in relation to this opportunity, you can post a vendor ad and let the public know um, that you're interested in that uh, you can do said services in relation to this. All right, so that's how to find an opportunity. These are the, the different sections of a given solicitation. Are there any questions? Our first pull out for questions. Any questions on that? Looks like we've got um, two questions here. Um, keep them coming in, folks. It's a good thing. 
Can you repeat the name of the codes? I see Williams is one. Yes, of the, the codes are UNSPSC codes, which stands for United Nations Standard Products and Services Code. We'll go over that a little bit more later in the, in the presentation, but those codes are really important. They're eight digit codes that are define a good or service that you provide. Uh, Eugene, uh, Eugenie wants to know, can you propose a contract that is not listed? Can you propose a contract? Um, yes, so when, if there's a, a request for proposal, will go out so the state will have a problem that they need to solve and they'll put out a request for for proposal where they just kind of explain the problem and you can you know provide your solution that way so that's the best way to do that perfect um someone's wondering what the web address is for cali procure i will type that in there it's quite easy to perfect. find and for those that can hear my voice, that's calipacure.ca.gov. Perfect. Um, can you send a copy of your capability statement? Not as part of the bid package. Um, we will we'll cover later who to send your capability statement to, which is typically the advocates. Um, that's, the, that's the best way to do that. What we kind of do uh, as the uh, post a bid uh, I'm sorry, the post a vendor ad is it's only text that you can post. Um, so a lot of people ask, can I post an attachment and attach my capability statement while posting a vendor ad? And you can only put text in there so that we kind of keep the playing field level um, for all of our suppliers. Perfect. And someone's wondering about the difference between the UN SPSC codes and NAICS codes. Could you say something about that? Sure. Um, so NAICS codes are typically used by the federal government um, and sometimes by local governments as well. And the state uses UNSPSC codes. So they're both classification systems. Um, they're just different. And the state uses UNSPSC codes. And there's typically like a, there's typically a, a UNSPSC code for every NAICS code or something similar. Um, but unless the state opportunity has federal funds, like, um, like a Caltrans opportunity where the, the Fed is also, the federal government is also providing uh, money, then it's only going to be UNSPSC codes in the opportunity. Perfect. Um, and Jermaine, you let me know how many questions, because we, we have more Q&A sessions as well, whenever you'd like okay. to move on. Yeah, uh, let's let's keep moving for the for the sake of time, and we'll perfect. we'll try as much as we can to get to all of your questions. I want to make sure we get all the content in, but please continue to ask your questions, and we will definitely do the best we can to get to it. Perfect. All right, so let's keep moving. Now we know how to find opportunities, so now we really want to focus in on updating and improving your profile. This is. Obviously everything we talk about today is important, but this is extremely important. A lot of people will get certified and stop. And they believe, okay, I went through the process, I got certified, my work here is done, the opportunities are gonna find me. And that's not the case. Um, the work actually starts once you go through the certification process. Having a, a robust profile is the best way for you to get to winning contracts. So let's look at that. So every state department must meet their participation goal. And I know you guys talked about this yesterday. Uh, the state has a 25% small business goal and a 3% DVBE participation goal. And to do that, there's things put in place for you to be able to do that. So state buyers can bypass the posting solicitations on Cali Procure and contract directly with small businesses or DVBEs, and they will reach out to you via the system and your contact information directly. Now, the way they do that is what's in your profile. That's how they find you, and that's how the system gives you automatic updates. So to achieve this, the buyers will contact businesses through a couple different ways. Number one, existing relationships. This is business relationships 
relationships, relationships. For all of you who can hear my voice right now, type relationships in the chat for me, please. Relationships in the chat, relationships in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you guys so much. This is extremely important, building relationships. The thing about the state of California, a lot of people are intimidated for to do work with the state because the state seems like such a big place. It seems like a, such a big institution. But at the end of the day, there's a couple people in these departments that make these decisions. And when opportunities come up, if you are top of mind, if you've done your due diligence and you've reached out, then an opportunity comes up and they, oh, I know someone who could do that. Let's reach out. Let's make sure that they're part of the group that we reach out to, right? So this is extremely important. And then second, outside of existing relationships, uh, they search by searching of business by keywords in UNSPSC codes. Come on. All right. So let's start with keywords. What makes a good keyword? So a keyword is an overview of what your business offers. These are individual words. Um, and you also want to use synonyms to words as well. So for example, if I'm a trucking firm, in my profile, I want to have keywords like trucking, but I'd also want to have similar words like transportation and hauling, right? So think of, think of it like searching for a book in a library and not necessarily like doing a Google search. So Google is a little bit more intuitive and Google can kind of, hey, did you mean this, that, or the other? Uh, but our system is really specific. And so they're going to be looking for these individual words that a buyer may search or a buyer may put as part of a solicitation. So I really love food. And with quarantine and no gym, my scale has definitely told me that I really love food. Uh, and I'm, I love seafood. So if I was a food vendor, more than likely I would sell seafood. So in my profile, as far as keywords, I would put seafood, but then I'd also put specifics like crab, shrimp, lobster, right? So you wanna make sure when you're building your keywords that you are building a robust list of keywords of all of the uh, words that, are, that apply to the goods and services that you offer. Next are the UNSPSC codes that, the, that there was a question about. Um, so UNSC, UNSPSC codes uh, classify the products or services that you provide. Now it is a eight digit code. So here's an example, uh, hospital construction services. So you see it has a full eight digit code and these codes are a hierarchical system. And so we'll, we'll kind of show you how that works, but it shows what you can provide. So here's an example. So this is the hierarchy of how the codes work. So you have a parent code at the very top, which is the uh, paper materials and products. And then it breaks down to different classifications under that. So every two digits are a different level of the code. Now, state buyers typically use level three and level four codes. So level three codes are gonna have just two zeros at the end. Level four codes will have numbers all the way through. So if you're picking a code, you're gonna wanna pick the level four and level three codes that apply to the goods and services that you provide. Now there's resources for where to find these codes. Uh, there's unspsc.org is a place that you can find them. We also have a lookup tool on our website where you can search for the UNSPSC codes that apply to your business. But this is extremely, extremely, extremely important to find the relevant codes because if I'm a buyer and I send out a solicitation, I'm going to attach the code to this solicitation. And so for you to get contacted 
you would have to have that code in your profile. Um, if you're searching for opportunities, you can search by the UNSPSC code uh, to be able to find it. Um, and also, we're going we're gonna to talk later about doing your research on past purchases, because sometimes, to be honest with you guys, the codes may not be intuitive, right? What code the state is using may not completely be intuitive. And so I'll give you an example. Um, debris removal in relation to wildfires. Uh, last fiscal year, the state of California spent about $1.5 billion on debris removal during the huge wildfires, right? Now, the code that was used for all of these, uh, for the majority of these opportunities was disaster recovery services. If I was a trucking firm, it may not be intuitive for me to put disaster recovery services, right? Um, so to be able to know that, I would have to do a little bit of research to be able to connect those dots. So anyone out there who does debris removal, you know, we're unfortunately in California, we're gonna continue to have wildfires and we're putting a lot of energy around those contracts and around finding small businesses that can help. Um, so if you do anything like that, uh, disaster recovery services, the UNSPSC code for that uh, should be in your profile, okay? Now, we know what a keyword is, we know what a UNSPSC code is, now that we know what those are, how do I update my notifications? So before we get in, there's two different sides of your profile. You have your registration side where your notifications come from, and then you have a certification side, which is where you can, you can put in your, your profile information. And the reason for this is that anyone can bid on an opportunity. They don't necessarily have to be a small business or a DVBE, right? So that's the reason that everyone has a registration side. Anyone can bid, but they have to be registered and they can get notifications. And then there's a second side of it for all of you who are certified firms, right? So we'll talk about the registration portion and how to get notifications. So you signed in to the system. At the top on the right, you're gonna click on the drop down, and you're gonna click manage notifications. Now, once you click on that, you're gonna see this page. I wanna call out a couple of things here. The first one here at the top, you see SB DVBE subcontracting notifications with the drop down. What this means is that if I'm a prime contractor and I bid on an opportunity, and I say that Michael Sis Sisson's company I apologize if I misspoke on your last name, but if I say Michael's company is going to be a subcontractor, then Michael's company is going to get a notification to say, hey, you have been included in a bid, right? And this is important so that, you know, A, people are not just using your company's name and status to try to win opportunities. Um, and it also keeps you abreast of everything that's going on, okay? A little bit lower down there, there's a notifications contact. Now, this is the email address that you want your notifications to go to. When you choose this email address, please make sure it's an email address that somebody is checking, right? Because you want to get, you want to know when these notifications come through. A lot of firms that I talk to will create a, a mailbox specifically for opportunities um, so that they don't miss anything that's coming through. So that's where you say that you want to be notified. Now here at the bottom, come on. Here at the bottom is the uh, CSCR notification. So this is when an opportunity comes out and goes into that list of open opportunities. Do you want to get notified when a code that's on one of those is in your profile? And you want to click the drop down to say yes to that as well because I wanna know if I sell seafood, I wanna know when they're looking for shrimp, right? Once you do that, these other boxes open up for you. So you see there at the top, I said, yes, I wanna be notified when a relevant opportunity goes into the system. 
there again, you're going to get the email address that you want that to go to. And then you have your service areas. This can be, you know, if you want to work in a particular county, uh, you can put just that county or you can check the box there for to service the entire state of California. The next section, really important, is your UNSPSC section. This is where you are going to add the codes that are relevant to your business. To find the codes, you can search for codes via keyword. Um, so let's say you didn't go to the UNSPSC.org, you didn't do our lookup tool, you just want to search by a keyword that's, that's in the code. You can put that keyword in there, click on search, it will give you results and you just click on the plus sign to add it to your notifications. The last thing that you wanna make sure that you do is click save. Um, if you don't click save, a lot of people don't click save, I do not know why, but you gotta click save. You click save for that to all be added to your profile. Now I know I've said this a couple of times so far, but this is important. You wanna make sure that you do this so that you get updated, you get the notifications, on what's going on. And also sometimes you may ask to, you may put notifications in here for things that you don't even sell yet, that you may be anticipating that you want to sell. Um, so for example, if I, Wayne that you guys talked to yesterday, will use a red paint example, but you know, if I sell red paint and there's a code for red paint, there's also codes for other colors. Um, and I can put those codes in there as well, just in case I wanna know if there's a need from the state. Um, and then I get those notifications. I say, okay, there's enough notifications coming in for this. Maybe I should offer it, okay? Next is updating your certification profile. So that was your notifications. Now this is your certification profile. Same thing, you will click on the drop down, and you will click on view certification profile. Under amend options, you're going to click on amend application. Now, it's gonna give you a bunch of tabs. You're trying to get to the other tab. Now, the way our system is currently set up and this version of it, you can't just click on the other tab. You have to scroll down and click on save and continue until you get to this other tab. Uh, but once you get there, you can add keywords, you can bring over your service areas if you would like, um, and you can also add your UNSPSC codes. Other, the other tab is important. I get a lot of people reaching out to me saying they can't find it. You've got to get to the other tab, save and continue until you get to other. I see there's a lot of questions. This is our next pullout for questions. James, what do we got? Perfect. Well, first I noticed that we have a couple questions about um, possibilities of getting notifications when a bid opportunity is posted um, that, that is in your codes. Uh, we all, similarly, we also had a question about finding a, about RFPs too late to join their mandatory webinars and things like that. Um, folks wondering if you have to just keep checking it back every day. So in the, so one of the options there was to say yes to CSCR notifications. Um, that means when a bid goes live, um, if it has those codes that are in your profile, you get notified. Um, so you want to make sure that you say yes to that. And that's going to give you the notification as soon as those bids go live with the opportunities or with the codes that you have in your profile. Um, so that's how you do that. Um, in relation to, so you, if you have the relevant codes, you should get that notification as soon as it goes live. Um, and ideally you wouldn't miss the dates if you go into the bid package, because that's going to give you all the details of when the, when the relevant dates are um, and, and what you need to do to bid. Um, so if you, if you have a robust profile and you stay on top of the notifications, that's the best option. Um, but if not, then yes, you would have to, to be checking back pretty periodically. I also just mentioned that um, if you're a client with NorCal PTAC, we can set up for free a bid matching service that does 
does this basic thing for California as well as federal, state, local, and prime contractor opportunities. If you're not in our service area, there are other PTACs that offer the similar services. You may have to pay a bit for some of them. Um, I know there are also third party um, uh, bid matching services. We can't really comment on those, but they are available as part of the ecosystem. Um, all right. Um, how can you indicate all the California counties in one search? So typically there's a um, statewide option. Um, so when you're adding when you're adding service areas to your profile, you can click on the box that says statewide. Um, also in the search options, there should be a statewide option where you're searching the entire state. Perfect. Um, let's see one second. Um, regarding contractors license types, does this mean any of the list, listed license types qualify to bid or do you have to carry, uh, carry the combined licensures? Um, so typically the an opportunity will specify if a particular license is required. And uh, based on that is, is I, don't, I don't know if I'm, if, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question. Can you repeat it for me, James? Um, does this mean that any of the listed license types qualify to bid or do you have to carry the combined licensures? I'm not sure I understand that either, actually. Oh, okay. I, I think they're asking like if, if it has multiple, um, if one opportunity has multiple uh, licenses listed, do you have to have all of them? Um, and typically that answer is yes. Um, what I would recommend for if you don't have all of them and, and there's multiple multiples listed, I would recommend reaching out to that contact person to get clarification. But typically if they add it, it it's a requirement. Okay, perfect. Um, is there a way to find buyers who use the CMAS agreement? Yes. Um, well, there's a way to find the CMAS agreements. Um, finding the buyer, yes. So the way that you would do that is, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, is how you, you're going to search past purchases, um, and you'll be able to see by the acquisition type if they purchased it off of a off of a CMAS. Um, so it will tell you the acquisition method if it was a competitive solicitation where they just post sent send it out to the public and the public bids, or if it was purchased off of a CMAS schedule. Um, so that would be the best way to kind of tell if these goods and services that I provide are purchased off of a schedule or purchased competitively. Like for example, um, like training services, consulting services, those are typically always on like a CMAS schedule and typically aren't sent out as a competitive solicitation. Um, but you'll, you'll know that by either A, uh, contacting the advocates that we'll talk about later, or B, searching past history to see uh, the acquisition method. All right. And this may be relevant to talking with the advocates, but someone's saying contracts under $250,000, is it true that they're not listed typically in the formal bid process? If, if so, how do you find opportunities? Yes. So if, if a... If a buyer is using the small business DVBE option, um, then it's not going to go out on the public facing website. It's gonna go directly to small businesses and DVBEs that are in the system. And so for you to get notified about those opportunities, you have to have a robust profile that has the codes that are relevant to that opportunity. Um, so if they're going to, they're looking for a, a contractor to do concrete, you've got to have the concrete UNSPSC code in your profile for the system to send you a notification to request for you to bid. Because they only need two bids from smalls or DVBEs. And if the, you know, if the prices are reasonable, they can make a decision. Perfect. Um, yeah. Are competitors' profiles on Cali Procure open to the public? Yes, they are. Every profile is public. This is another thing that we recommend is once you do your research, you'll also be able to see who got the award, right? 
And so what I recommend and we recommend is that you, you find out who your competition is and then you look up their profile. You look up their profile and, and I, can, I can show you where that is. You look up their profile, see what codes they have in their profile. And if you see codes that you don't have in yours, then you add them to yours. It's all public facing. It's not plagiarism. <laughs> it's, it's the best way for you to be competitive. It's marketplace research. Absolutely. All right. Um, is there somewhere to put in keywords that you mentioned and not just the UNSPSC codes, but keywords as well? Or To put in keywords into your certification profile? I right. believe they're asking. That's the question, yeah. Um, no. The, so yes, because your certification profile is going to have keywords, but they're going to come from the, uh, the registration side. So you, you have the option to pull them over. Okay, so there will be key, keywords on the registration side. Correct. Um, you wanna keep going from here? Yes. All right. All right, thank you guys for your, for your engagement and the questions, this is awesome. Absolutely, it's great. All right, so let's keep moving here. Now, where do I do research? We just kind of been talking about research. Uh, where do I go? How do I do it? So let's take a look. So I want to, I'm starting and I really, really highly recommend that you guys do this first. I understand that you guys are, you guys are small businesses. You have limited, we have limited time. We all have limited time. We have limited resources to devote uh, to, to any, any path. Um, so we really want to do the research first so you can focus your efforts. So you're going to research the goods and services that you provide and look for historical data to say who buys it and how much, right? So to do that, you'll go to Cali Procure homepage. You're gonna click on this magnifying glass here and you're going to click on view past purchases. Now, sometimes you get a dialogue box after you click view past purchases that basically says, do you wanna continue? And you'll say yes to that. And it's going to take you to another search engine, similar to the one that we had before, um, where you can search by all of, the, all of the things that we talked about before, like department, uh, name. You can also search by acquisition method. I was asked before about CMAS. Um, you can search by acquisition type. But in this example, we're just doing a basic search um, by description, and we're searching paper. So when you search paper, um, you can also search here by a, by a date range. If you wanna, because if you don't do that, it's just gonna give you all of the historical data. Um, if you search by a date range, like the last 12 months, you can condense it down to what's being purchased more recently. Um, and then you're gonna get results. So these results that you see here are the basic results. There's also, if you look there in the middle, you can get detailed information which has a little bit more uh, detailed info about each each given opportunity but so let's point out what this what this tells us the uh, department name here on the on the very left this is the department that's purchasing this good or service right what you'll notice is that a lot of times you'll start seeing maybe three, four departments that keep popping up in this list. Now I know, okay, I take the whole state of California, I'm just going to narrow it down to these four departments because I know these four departments buy what I sell, All right? You've got purchase document there. That purchase document has a hyperlink. When you click on it, it will open up um, to give you kind of like some high level specifics on it. A lot of times you'll be able to see quantities um, you'll be able to see the quantity breakdown. You'll be able to see the pricing breakdown there. Uh, you've got the description, start and end date. And then you've got a grand total of how much the total contract was worth. Um, you've got supplier name. Like we talked about, the supplier name is the company that won the award. So now if I see uh, San Joaquin distributors there because they're in a small business, or American Textile, I know I can search them up and I can compare my profile to theirs. 
uh, acquisition type, and then acquisition method. Um, so see, there's some, you have competitive there, you have statewide contracts. If you go a little bit further down, you have SB option. So those, those didn't go public, they went directly to small businesses. So you can check the acquisition method to see um, if, if these opportunities are normally competitive or if they are normally SB option or, or how they're buying it um, so you can be in line. Now it's cut off in the screenshot, but on if you move further to the right, you'll see the buyer name and the buyer contact um, for each opportunity. I didn't wanna add that because that, that changes um, as, you, as you move forward. Sometimes people change. I don't want you guys taking screenshots and reaching out to people who aren't there, but just know that that is, that is a part of, of this, these results. Now, this information is really, really important because you're taking the huge state of California and you're narrowing it down to a couple departments, a couple people um, in, in relation to the buyers and we'll talk about the advocates. And now you can put all of your emphasis into them instead of casting such a wide net that can be time consuming. Okay, what questions do we have about uh, past purchases doing that market research? Um, someone's wondering uh, what the EPPSABRC column is when they're researching on um, fiscal. Is there a mm -hmm. column for that? Um, not that I've seen as being relevant. So to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not familiar with that column. Well, if it, if it doesn't mean anything to you, it's probably not that important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me go back up here. So let's see. Um, someone's wondering, if is there any limit to the number of UNSPS so, codes that you can post or should post? Do you have any advice on that? Um, I have not ever run into a limit. Um, I know companies that have tons. What I will tell you is you want to make sure that the codes that you're putting in your, your certification profile are relevant to what you do. Um, because this is, this is what happens, right? We talked about relationships and we talk about people. Um, so if I'm a buyer, right, I'm a human, and I reach out to your company for an opportunity and I don't hear anything, and I reach out again and I don't hear anything, well, the next time there's an opportunity, I'm probably going to say, ah, I'm not going to reach out to them because they may not even still be in business. I don't know what's going on. They're not responding, right? You may have seen that and be like, oh, well, I don't offer that, so I'm not going to respond. So if you get direct messages, a, a key is always respond. Even if your plate is completely full, you're not taking on any new work, just respond not able to bid on this this opportunity thank you right so that the person on the other side of it knows okay this business is still working right this business is active they just don't want to bid on this I'll reach out on the next one right um, so I haven't found I haven't found a, a limit but I want you to limit it to the goods and services you actually provide so that you don't come up in a bunch of searches that you're not prepared to execute on and then you start getting written off as a non-responsive business. Okay, perfect. Um, and someone just wanted to go over again, how do we get to this um, um, from the search page to the supplier profiles? Search page to the supplier profiles. Uh, what, we, what we just went over was how to search past purchases. Is that what they're referring to? I think, bef did you, um, how do we get from the search page to the supplier profile? I'm not sure exactly. To the supplier profile. So for the competitor, perhaps looking up competitors or looking up um, yeah. where to find James, them. if you can, if you can do me a favor, because that's not in the that's not in the slides. If you can remind me towards the end, I can try to I can go to the live environment, um, sure. pull up the website, and and show that way. Okay. Live environment. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find one specifically relevant. It's another question for live environment. Uh, da, da, da. 
is there a way to research primes um, to, to look in for prime contracts using this opportunity? Um, to search primes. So primes are obviously not going to be in our database because they're, they're typically, typically uh, not certified smalls. Um, but when you do your market research of past purchases, it will show the prime that it was awarded to. And then you can search that prime, I would recommend, uh, you know, through the, through the internet, through Google or something to get their information. And because a lot of our primes, especially in, in construction, a lot of them have uh, subcontractor programs where um, you can go through a class or two or whatever their criteria are for you to be on an approved subcontractor list with them. And then as they bid for these big opportunities, like in Sacramento, there's a lot of, um, a lot of building that's, that's gonna happen. Um, and, and these big contractors need you, right? They need smalls. Because again, if, if, I'm, if I just won a $100 million construction contract, I'm still obligated to subcontract 25% of that out, right? So I need to find small businesses. So building those relationships, relationships, relationships with primes, especially in the construction field is really important. <laughs> Perfect. While we're on the topic of relationships, someone's asking, uh, Corrine is asking, I've, I've emailed past purchase buyers and set my capability statement, but I received very few responses. Is there something else I should do to build these relationships? Uh, yes. A, I would say to go through the advocates first, and we're going to talk about advocates, I believe, next or, or here shortly. You want to go through the advocates first because they, it's the advocate's job. Um, part of their job to interact with the public and answer those questions. A lot of times buyers, if they're not in a, in a, in not actively going through the process and they're the contact person, they don't typically respond a whole lot. You really want to start with, with the advocates. Knowing who the buyer is, is important, especially if you're communicating with them. Um, but their part of their job is not to communicate with the public. That's typically the advocate's responsibility. And we'll talk about them next. Perfect. All right. Should we move on? And yes, but I, I and I want to point out whether it's buyer or it's advocate, they're not all created equal, right? And this is this is just real talk. They're not all created equal. Um, and you know if if I'm super busy trying to find concrete contractors and you're reaching out to me for seafood that, I, that we purchased last month, I may not have time to reach out to you or to reach back because I'm, I'm focused on this because I'm a human, right? But the next time that I need seafood, I remember that you reached out to me, right? So I, it's, I say that to say, don't get discouraged. Um, I say that to say, you know, this, reaching out and staying consistent, you have to find a way to be professionally consistent without being annoying. Um, and, and you'll find that you'll, you'll find that balance as you go. Um, but don't get discouraged if you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, get a response on your first email. Perfect. All right. So let's keep moving. All right. Advocates. So advocates are state employees tasked with assisting SBs and DBBEs to pursue contracts with their department. Every department or agency that spends more than $100,000 in a fiscal year have a SB DBBE advocate. Um, some, of, some departments have more than one advocate, like Caltrans, they have multiple advocates. These, these people are the people that I recommend you really focus on building a relationship with. Start with these advocates. They're more in the know of what's going on in their given department than even me, right? So I'm a statewide advocate in a way for you guys, um, but an advocate in a given department is going to know, have their fingers on the pulse of what's going on in that department at a given time. Um, so reaching out to them and building that relationship is probably the, the most important relationships that, that you can build to start with. Okay, so what do advocates assist with? 
uh, they can assist with identifying if the department buys what you provide, uh, advocating for your business and future procurement opportunities. Um, when that comes out, they can say, hey, I know an, a, a company that does that. We need to make sure that they're included. Um, they can give you information on upcoming procurements. If it's something that hasn't been released yet, they will know information about the things that are coming down the pipe. Um, and they can also assist with issues with prompt payment. Um, if you've done some work and for whatever reason you haven't been paid soon enough, um, you can reach out to them and they should have some remedies and some paths for you to be able to, to get to your payment as quickly as possible. All right. With your advocates, you're also going to want to send them your capability statement. So there was a question earlier about capability statements. You're going to want to send the advocate your capability statement. Um, if you're not familiar with capability statements, you can just Google capability statements and a, a bunch of examples will come up. I know um, that, you know, there's, there's assistance that can also be given with capability statements. Um, in the capability statement, please include your certification number. Once you get certified, you're going to have a number. Know that number and include it on your capability statement so that when an advocate or a buyer or whoever runs across your capability statement and they need small businesses for a given opportunity, one of the first things they're gonna do is just look you up and see if you have a active uh, certification. So make sure that you include that. Um, also mention your relevant experience, especially uh, in public contracting. If you've done any work with the state or counties or the federal government or what have you, I um, mean, include that. Um, because that, that's going to stand out to advocates and to buyers. All right, so how do we find them? So we're going to go to Cali Procure homepage and click on the check mark, which is going to take you to a list of our resources. Here at the bottom under outreach resources, you're going to have find an SBDDBE advocate. You'll click on that will take you to a another page that has download the advocate directory. Now this is going to download a list of all of the departments with advocates, their advocate information and their contact. We've done some things for you by highlighting departments that have existing first policies, meaning they have a small business DVBE first policy where they're gonna reach out to our small businesses first before they go out to the general public. So if I've identified maybe four departments that buy what I sell and two of them have a first policy and I have limited time, I'm probably going to focus on those departments that have a first policy first because I have a higher probability and less competition um, to get a contract. All right, so here are some of the highlighted departments. We also have uh, X marks next to the departments that buy construction services. Uh, so people that are in the construction field, these are the departments that you may want to focus on. You'll have the name and the contact information for each advocate. Obviously, we cut that off because that can change. Advocates can you know, change position. But this is how you find them, get their information, reach out to them, send them your. I always recommend starting with an email. Um, and then you can follow up how you see fit after that. Um, but we've seen most success, especially when talking with advocates, that they prefer the initial contact to be via email. Here's a quick little example of a capability statement. Just want to point out, see they have the relevant UNSPSC codes. If they have certificates, um, core competencies are on there, some of their major clients. You know, this is, I'm, I'm not telling you what to do as far as the, the format to use. It's just some things that we know work and some things that we know are really important to buyers and to advocates. Um, let's talk about reciprocity partners really quick. Uh, reciprocity partners are the agencies that honor the state of California small business or DVBE certifications. Um, you can visit each agency's website for more information on their, their individual programs. The next slide is a lot and I apologize, but I, I just want to show you guys the amount of reciprocity partners we have. So just prepare, so, see it's a lot, it's a lot going on. Uh, but in each area, we have different reciprocity partners. The reason I point this out to show you is that some partners accept 
just our small business certification. Some accept just our DVBE certification. Some accept both um, on our website in the same place that we showed the advocate, you can also find this list of, of reciprocity partners. So a lot of people will get state certified to do, you know, work with BART or with, you know, a utility company uh, because they also accept our certifications and, the, and it kind of streamlines the process when doing business with them. Um, now, I know you may have questions on that. We're gonna, we're gonna have a, a section for questions there. Some resources we wanna highlight, the Small Business Development Centers. These are free resources that we wanna highlight too. Small Business Development Centers uh, for new businesses. They, they do business consulting, business planning, marketing, access to capital. Obviously, the PTACs who are amazing, uh, James and his team, they're, they're great partners of ours. Um, and so we highly recommend that, that, that you engage with them. Um, also, SCORE has a business mentorship program as well that you can utilize to assist your business get, in getting off the ground and, and, and continue, continuing to move forward. Um, last, I know you guys went over this yesterday, so I may not spend a whole lot of time on it, but CUF is really important, commercially useful function. This is put in place so that people are not taking advantage of our program and of our certifications. There are benefits to the certifications that sometimes people try to exploit. So we have to make sure that everyone is providing a commercially useful function. So all California certified smalls and DVBEs bidding on or participating in a state contract, regardless of the procurement approach or the payment method used must perform a commercially useful function. It, essentially, you're, you're not a passer through, right? You're, you're not, you're, they're not using the name of your company just to win the contract, you're actually doing a distinct portion of the work. Um, so you're executing a distinct element of the work, performing, managing, or supervising work, performing work that is normal for the firm's business or services, negotiating price, you're actually involved. Um, you're not performing cuff if you're just an extra participant in the transaction that you're not being used to perform the work. Um, you are basically used to just uh, exploit the fact that you're a certified firm. Uh, that's not the intention of this program. Um, and there are repercussions for that there. And, and so we just really encourage you guys to, to uphold the integrity of the program because uh, we put a lot of work into it and we really want to level the playing field for all you guys so that we can make sure that the opportunities are available. Now, this business outreach at dgs.ca.gov is where you can reach out to me and my team um, if you have any questions. Um, but we also, as you're, as you're having success, when you get your first contract, when you start killing it, like I know you guys will, we want to know about it. And that's one of the things, to be honest with you guys, that really drive me to continue to do this work is to see companies like yours that go through these workshops, do the work, and then they have success. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of one of the people that are in charge of highlighting the success stories. So please, as you, as you have success, let us know um, and we'll do what we can to put the spotlight on that success as much as possible. Uh, so business outreach at dgs.ca.gov is where you can ask questions and also give us your success stories. Quick review over what we went over. We went over the California State Contracts Register. This is where the contracts are, where the bid opportunities are. We went over how to update and improve your profile. We talked about skippers, which is where you do the historical, uh, the, the, the historical data, SBDVBE advocates, reciprocity and additional resources. Um, my, my contact information, you wanna go through that business outreach because you know, if I'm, my whole, our whole team manages that. So you're gonna get, you're gonna get some quick responses um, through that mailbox. Um, also, the, the resources page on the DGS website um, also has this information. And James, you want to talk about upcoming events that you guys have? Sure. Uh, and just remind folks that we are going to have um, another Q&A and a live demonstration, I think, of, of Calipure. That's still on the table. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you don't, don't take off yet. Um, but I do want to talk about some of our upcoming events real quick. Um, so we just had these two webinars with the DGS. Um, Caltrans is having virtual contractors boot camp. It's starting on the 19th in just a few days. There's multiple sessions. Check it out. It's for the Nord Northern region, three districts. Um, if you're interested in um, a wildland firefighting, uh, that's, uh, you know, we're, we're going to cover Viper and how to do work with the Forest Service. On the 21st, we've got a webinar. All of these are at 10 a.m. Um, contracting with local governments that's focusing on Shasta County, but it's going to be relevant for other counties as well. And then how to do um, business with a BOR, the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, that's on February 11th. All of these events and any event that we create, um, you know, a new one, we're always going to post it to our calendar. We keep this thing updated. Um, and it's chock full of uh, good resources. So do check our website out, norcalptech.org slash calendar. Um, and we've got some time for more questions here. Um, if, if, you do, if, you do, if you are leaving early, just, uh, just to let you know, you'll be rerouted to a, a page where it's gonna have a link and it's gonna say it's a satisfaction survey. Um, it looks kind of funny, it's a Google doc, but it is a satisfaction survey that we would really, really like you to fill out, helps us improve our services, reflect on how we did, um, and it also is really, really important for our funder. So um, it just takes a couple seconds, you can do it anonymously. All right, let's get to the Q&A. We, uh, I took some notes on the questions because a lot of them were on the same theme, and we had several questions about um, counties. So uh, some folks were wondering, like, why don't I see any county options on Cal Procure? Um, do I have to reach out to them individually? Um, and you mentioned reciprocity program for certifications for counties, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they're on they they use Cal Procure, correct? That that's correct. Um, so a, a different counties will have their own um, filing system for their opportunities. Um, the county opportunities are not going to be on Cal Procure. Cali Procure is only going to have opportunities provided by a, a state department. Um, so you, you would have to reach out to those counties individually. Um, a lot, some of them use Planet Bid, some of them use other, other platforms, but they wouldn't be through Cali Procure. And just to notice to folks that are wondering about counties and how to get in touch with um, your, the, the correct contacts there, our website, norcalptech.org, um, on the resources tab, there is a whole page on local contracting and we've put together a list of the best contacts we know of for the different counties. Of course, you know, we update as, as much as possible, but yeah, check out those resources. I really can't recommend enough to check out that resources tab on our website. It's chock full of answers to a lot of your questions here. Um, I told you they're good. The PTAC is good. Good, we're good. I'm not gonna <laughs> argue with you on that one. <laughs> You guys are good too. Um, all right, so uh, we had a lot of questions about how to find other suppliers, view profiles and find advocates. I think that you went over that in some detail and I think that you're gonna maybe demonstrate some of that live. Yeah, let's let's see if we can, if we can do that. Let's, all right. Let's see if this will, can you see my web browser? Yep. That's okay, fine. so Cali Procure homepage, you can go to quick links again and click on find a certified SB or DVBE. And this is, this is what I would do if I was looking for uh, a company in our database, right? Um, and it, it has all of these, these different search options that you can use to find a firm. Um, but let's say you were doing that market research, you found a company that was awarded a, a contract you would go here and look them up to check out their profile. Um, I don't really have a name in mind. Um, so let's say, I don't know. So there's, so you find a given a company. Now you have their profile. You can see their service areas and now you can view their keywords and classifications are their UNSPSC codes. So you can click on that. These are the codes that that form has on their profile, right? Um, so it's, it's pretty simple to, and they only have a, a couple keywords, but pretty simple to find them. Click on these two options to compare your keywords to theirs. 
your classifications to theirs, um, and then you can, you know, make adjustments as you see fit. Were there any other questions on on that? Um, other other things about the website people were wondering um, where to find the list of reciprocity partners on the website. You went over a list. Mm -hmm. That's something you can find here. Yeah. So from the home page, click on the check mark here, and then you have find reciprocity partners that accept DGS certified firms. You'll click on that. And then this is the list here. We have it broken out by region. And then there's links to each one of their, their websites for their program and the utilities. So all of that is, is listed there under our, our resources list. Perfect. Um, and someone's wondering when you find a supplier to research, can you just click on their name? I think maybe we actually went over this. Yeah, I think we went over this. Right. So we, when you're finding, so where we search water. So yeah, you'll do the search and then you'll get a list. And then the list, you'll just click on a, click on the name and it launches their profile. And then these are where you can find their keywords and UNSPSC codes on these two buttons. Perfect. Um, we have a question from IC who's wondering, um, their startup is related to COVID. How, to mm -hmm. how do you search for bids when the services offered are new? I'm assuming they mean that they might not have UNS piece of codes um, already um, available for them. Is that a situation that's encountered? Um, so even if you're like, if you provide PPE, there's codes for it. There's, there's codes for the mask, there's, there's codes for respirators, there's, there's codes for sanitizer, there's, there's codes for all that stuff. Because um, they all existed prior to COVID, right? So there, there were already codes that were initiated for them. Um, so everything that we're purchasing in relation to COVID and PPE and all that, it, it all has a code in one way or the other. So looking up something for new services is not really a case. So you, same way you would look for other services. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, Perfect. Uh, people are wondering about the roles of advocates. Can they help debrief you if your company's not selected for a contract? Um, that's not typically the advocate's responsibility. Typically, um, someone on the on the awarding side, either the buyer or someone in that office, would be responsible for the debrief. So once you've submitted a bid, um, and it will tell you in the bid package, you have a certain amount of time where you can um, you can either contest um, or you can also get um, a debrief uh, about, you know, what happened, basically, you know, why you didn't win or, or what it, whatever the case may be. Um, so there'll be instructions in that bid packet on, on how to do that. Um, but that's, that's not the advocate's responsibility, but that is the responsibility of someone related to that. And you can get that information. We do recommend you doing that um, because that's going to get you, get you ramped up quicker than just blindly submitting bids, you want to get feedback afterwards so you can kind of tailor your, uh, your efforts moving forward. Perfect. Um, a couple of folks are wondering how often the advocacy list is updated. Uh, the list of advocates? Yeah. I assume it's, yeah. it's updated every Friday. Every Friday. All right. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good rate of refresh. Uh, now, all advocates in all departments are not created equal. So we update it every Friday as we get the change information, right? So that department has to send over a change request to us and then we'll update the list. So if they haven't sent that request, we may not know that someone was swapped out, um, but typically departments are on top of that because it's, it's part of the procedure. And so it'll typically update every Friday. Okay, um, someone's wondering about how to become a CMAS supplier when is it appropriate to become a CMAS supplier? What products and services are purchased that way? Yeah. Um, so to be honest with you, CMAS does, that's a whole nother thing. It's a, it's a whole presentation worth of, of information. Um, you can, 
If you go to dgs.ca.gov and just type in CMAS. Let's see, is that gonna... And you'll get to the, the CMAS page. There's a CMAS application. There's contact information for the CMAS representatives who can, they can really kind of walk you through a, if the goods or services that you provide are on a CMAS schedule, um, and then they can walk you through submitting the application if it's advantageous for you to, to go through CMAS. Um, I would recommend when you do the research, you look at the acquisition method and see if it will say CMAS, if, if that's how it was purchased. Um, and then you can, you can go here and reach out to them or submit an application. Um, I don't really wanna get into the weeds on CMAS right now, but this is where you you can get information. They have the guides. They have a you know a bunch of uh, information here and contact info uh, for them to answer any questions you have. Perfect. And this is going to sound like a shameless plug, but PTAC does have a webinar on CMAS, all about CMAS from our procurement specialist Nancy Pigeon. Again, it's on the past webinars page under resources, so you can take a look at that, and that's a whole hour plus on on this topic. So. Awesome. You avail yourself. Um, we had a couple questions uh, relating to the keyword list, how you edit it. I think you did go over that, but it seems like mm -hmm. a couple folks are wondering um, exactly how that was done. Where do you access it from? So to, I'm assuming entering your keywords into, um, I don't know if they mean into UNSPC PSC codes or if they mean on your registration profile. Um, yeah, we kind of have to just go back into the presentation maybe. Um, but that part was definitely covered on how to get to it. The reason why I'm, I'm I don't have access to a, a dummy account right now to be able to show it to you in the live environment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is. This is why we would use the, the slides. Well, in this case, we can refer them back to the recording um, and the slides. Um, right. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, government contracting requires a lot of research, so you're going to have to dig in either way. Um, Absolutely. So thank you for bearing with us. Um, uh, we have more questions. If you have more questions, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Jermaine at the, biz, uh, at the um, email address that he's provided and I dropped in the chat. Um, I think we, we should cut things off now. Um, we did have a question or two about how to apply to become a PTAC uh, client. So I'll just say, you go to our website, NorCalPTAC.org, click on the red apply now button, that will get you started. Do check our service area because I reject about two applications, or two or three applications every week, just because they're not in our service area. And that is one of the restrictions we have to follow. So uh, make sure you're in a, a 15 county service area. If you're not, you can check. Usually I just type in, um, you know, Sacramento County PTAC, and you'll find a capital, California Capital PTAC, something like that. So um, just make sure. But um, if you are in our service area, we're looking forward to working with you. So and and, one, one, one thing I want, I yeah. want to leave you guys with is this has been an extremely difficult time for small businesses. Um, COVID has really done its work on, on our small business community. Um, so if you can, if you know this information will help another small business that wasn't able to join today, um, let's pass this information along. Let's, let's hold each other up during this time, share best practices, share information, share opportunities so we can make it through this time period. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to join us today. I wish you the absolute best of luck and please reach out with your success stories because I would love to hear them. Absolutely. And thanks, Jermaine, so much. We're getting a lot of love from our participants today for you and your um, excellent presentation. People are saying it's the best webinar they've been to. So good job. Um, it's really good information. I appreciate working with you guys. And to all of our participants, absolutely um, stay strong and thanks for joining and look out for the slides and video later today. Awesome. Right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, everyone.